Is wholesale co-location causing market oversupply? Courtesy of SP Home Runs Guide to Lead Generation Best Practices for Co-location Data Centers. The simple answer to this question is to first look at supply and then demand. However, without digging deeper into both aspects, you might come well into the wrong conclusion. While it is true that data center capacity gluts sometimes make the headlines, in the specialized press at least, we need to know more. Answers to the following questions can help make a definitive statement about wholesale co-location and its effects on the market. Which different solutions compete in this market? Which factors affect it? How are co-location resources provided? In a continual stream or in one mega data center at a time? Who wants to buy data center capacity? Which channels are available for selling data center capacity? Moore's laws still rule. Processor speeds continue to increase, data generated and stored continues to rise, and the appetite for more compute power at all levels is healthy. Overall, it seems that the data center capacity is being led by demand rather than outstripping it. Hiccups come when leasers of large data centers build their own facilities and existing DC capacity then arrives again at the market, often as a wholesale co-location capacity. As supply goes up, prices tend to come down unless sellers find additional sales channels for their wares. Large and lumpy or small and smooth. Monolithic mega data centers mean large chunks of capacity arriving at once on the market. Availability of existing data centers such as the one vacated by Facebook when it built its own DC has a regional impact. However, if new data centers use modular construction, customers will be able to buy smaller portions or acquire large one-tenant solutions as required. Market oversupply, if it exists today, would tend to diminish tomorrow as the supply curve for data center capacity becomes smoother and stays closer to the demand curve. This includes purpose-built co-location facilities. History is bunk, maybe. Henry Ford said this and went on to build an automotive giant. In the data center market, however, there is a strong hint from bygone IT eras of what will happen in the future. When computing first started, it was with mainframes. Marketers at IBM saw no more than a handful of sales opportunities at the start. Then mainframe sales multiplied and timesharing arrived, followed by servers and PCs. As technology becomes more accessible and affordable, the mass market develops. This holds for data centers, too. Co-location can address an additional market, making the whole demand pie bigger. A lot level retailing co-location rack. The last piece of the jigsaw is a sales channel to get co-location capacity out to customers in the new mass market. Co-location service providers already see new demand for a 100 kilowatt level rental that they can satisfy by carving up megawatt capacity. Retailers can bring co-location sales down to rack level. This meets the demand of small and mid-sized enterprises looking for solutions that save on capital expenditure and are robust for business continuity into the bargain. The future is a continuum. Before the end and low-end DC facilities markets were separate, now demand and facilities exist to allow customers to grow from a rack of co-location to occupying an entire data center. Data center builders are now too smart to believe they can simply build it and they will come. They stay closer to their customers. Market oversupply may never completely for the reasons above, but it will become less and less of an issue. How much modularity would you look for in a data center destined for wholesale co-location? Share your opinion by leaving a comment in the space below. You can download a copy of this guide while it's still available at www.datacenterleadgen.com. Thanks so much for stopping by and tuning in today to learn all about is wholesale co-location causing market oversupply.